In this video, we learn how to find a functions domain. And this is the first of several videos. And in this particular video, we focus on a very important rule. And that is that denominators cannot be equal to zero. So let's get started. For the first function we have here, we have f of x, which equals to five over x minus six. And we need to find this function's domain. Remember, a function's domain is the set or interval of numbers for which the function is well defined. And that sounds a bit complicated, but what that really means is that a function's domain consists of all of the values we can actually replace x by. And one of the best ways to find the domain is to find any numbers we can't replace x by. And so here, because we can't divide by zero, we need to make sure that x minus six doesn't equal to zero. And this symbol here is an equal sign, which I've hatched through, which means not equal to. And I can solve this, you can think of this as a non-equation, just as I would solve an equation. In other words, I can get rid of this six that's being subtracted on the left-hand side by adding six to both sides. And that quickly leads us to x not equal to six, done. And so what we have here is a condition for this function to be properly defined. And what it basically tells us is that we can replace x by anything we want except for six. And so this function's domain, domain, will be equal to all the numbers except for six. And so I write that like this. I write it's equal to all real numbers with this big R here, except for or excluding six, which I write inside a pair of curly brackets like this. There we go. That's this function's domain. And we could have found this domain by looking at this function's graph. Indeed, if you use your graphical calculator to plot the curve y equals to five over x minus six, then the curve you get should look something like this. Looking at this curve as we go from left to right, we can see that it comes in two branches. Indeed, this curve splits into two across the value x equals to six. And this vertical dotted green line that I've drawn here is known as a vertical asymptote. And its equation here is x equals to six. Careful, this line isn't actually part of this function's graph, but we usually draw something like I've drawn here to indicate that this curve cannot cross this line. And it can't cross it because every point on this line has an x coordinate equal to six. And remember, our function isn't defined if x equals to six, so it never crosses this line. On the other hand, the curve is perfectly well defined for every single other value of x there is. And we can see that here because the curve goes on forever on either side of that vertical line. And that confirms this function's domain x can be absolutely any number except for six. Now, vertical asymptotes like the one we have here will always be seen at a value of x at which the denominator would equal to zero. And in fact, we'll see that again in the second example here. We have f of x which equals to three over 14 minus two x. Well, again, to make sure that this function is properly defined, we need to make sure that the denominator doesn't equal to zero. In other words, we need to make sure that 14 minus 2x doesn't equal to zero. Now I solve this non-equation in the same way that I would solve an equation. And for that, I'll start by getting rid of this 14 on the left-hand side. And I do so by subtracting 14 from both sides. That leads us to negative 2x not equal to negative 14. And now to get rid of this negative 2, which is multiplying x, I divide both sides by negative two. And so that becomes x not equal to negative 14 over negative two. In other words, x not equal to seven, done. And so provided x doesn't equal to seven, the denominator will never equal to zero. And the function therefore will be well-defined. And so we can write the domain is equal to all real numbers excluding seven. Done. And again, you can use your graphical calculator to see what this function's curve looks like. And so that curve would be y equals to three over 14 minus two x. And it should look something like this. I'll just draw my x, y grid. It will have a vertical asymptote when x equals to seven, since that would lead to the denominator being equal to zero. And I draw that with a dotted line like this. 
that vertical asymptote will cross the x-axis at 7, and its equation is x equals to 7. And so the curve will come in two branches, and this time it'll look like this. There we go. And so we see once again that the curve never crosses this vertical asymptote, whose equation is x equals to 7, and that aside from at this value of x, the curve is perfectly smooth and goes on forever on either side of that. Which further confirms that we can replace x inside our function by any real number except for 7. And there we go. That's it for this first video on how to find a function's domain. Remember, denominators cannot be equal to zero. And at the values of x at which denominators would equal to zero, the function's curves will always present a vertical asymptote. That is, a vertical line which the curve will never cross, and causes it to be split in two. And there we go. That's it for this tutorial.